This is the Franken HP. So it looks like an unassuming home office, Windows XP, Pentium 4 era, um, uh, mint tower desktop uh, of the era. So probably very tail end of Pentium 4 era and Windows XP era. So a couple years before Windows Vista and the Core 2 line of Intel desktop CPUs. However, this is not what it looks like. Now, there's a reason why this is called the Franken HP. On the outside, it looks like an HP Pavilion, specifically the Pavilion A1104X, whatever that means. And while this is not a sleeper PC per se, because the parts that are in there now are not qualifying of the sleeper name, it is not what it seems. Now, if there's anyone out there who's familiar with this specific computer, um, once I open this up, they'll immediately know that something is wrong. So if we take the side panel off here, you'll notice that the it's extremely unassuming. It, there's no you know giant graphics card hanging out. There's no you know, like four hard drives or anything or RGB, but what is in here is very interesting. So this motherboard is actually out of a Dell Vostro 200 um, small form factor PC. Um, so that's that's the motherboard. Um, the blue DDR2 RAM in there, I don't know if you can see that, but that's it has a heat spreader. That's also from the Dell Vostro. The RAM next to it is actually the original RAM out of my Dell Inspiron 530. The CPU that's in here is actually a Pentium. It's not a Pentium dual core. That's what it originally was in this motherboard. But it's a Pentium E5800. So a Pentium from around the time of the uh, Core 2 Duo era. Um, it's actually a very um, competent CPU. And I used it in my main system for a while before upgrading to an Optiplex. More on that Optiplex a little later. So the CPU is actually from a different Optiplex that I acquired over the summer that had a bad motherboard, but the CPU was still good in it. So that is up to three computers now. Um, this is actually the original hard drive that came with this HP. This is a Mac Store 250 gigabyte hard drive. I don't have any extra hard drives laying around at the moment, and this one's fine. It's SATA and it works. Uh, the DVD or W drive in here that originally would have came with this HP was actually an IDE. Um, light scrub drive and because this new power supply which I put in here did not have a Molex connector I had to swap out the hard drive the motherboard does have an IDE header on it so that would have worked but the power supply did not um, support that and this hard and this disk drive did come out of the Vostro computer now the power supply this is the original from the HP it's uh, quite an antiquated bottle. I'm not sure who made it. I, uh, Best Tech. Um, it's an ATX 250 watt. Um, nothing crazy. What is a little weird about it is it is um, 24 pin motherboard power instead of the full whatever. I'm not sure. It has a smaller you know, connector for that. And then it has a Molex and floppy drive power which is just something a little odd, and it only has one SATA um, cable, which is actually a break-off from the Molex. So without that little break-off cable, this would be a Molex and um, floppy drive only power supply. So that had to go. What is in here now is actually a much newer power supply from a much newer computer. This is actually out of a Dell Optiplex 3010. Uh, which is my main system currently, which has a Thermaltake uh, Smart 500 watt in it. This is, I believe, a 275 watt, completely adequate for what is for what this computer is. Um, so that's four computers now. Now the the missing link in this to be what I want it to be, which is a Windows XP, Windows 7 era gaming computer, is a graphics card. I've ordered it. It's not on the. It's on the way. It's not here yet. Uh, the graphics card will be a Lenovo OEM from some sort of small form factor, um, Think Center, Think Station, whatever they call them, a GT630, 2 gigabyte. Now, 
one of the problems I had with this computer originally was this was going to be a Windows XP exclusive gaming computer. So that would have had a Pentium 4 in it, 4 gigabytes of RAM, and some sort of graphics card. Now, the issue I had with finding a graphics card was the original motherboard. Now, the original motherboard was an ASUS model. Um, uh, yeah, specifically a PTGOLA, a notoriously awful OEM board that um, lacks PCIe, even though it has the headers. Um, it also only supports a Pentium 4 um, CPU, even though it is socket LGA 775, so it could theoretically on that socket support all the way up to like a quad core Q6600, uh, just it just doesn't uh, do the chipset. Uh, Power-wise, it could definitely support that quad core because the Pentium 4 was a notoriously hungry uh, uh, chip, especially on the Prescott architecture. And it's just, this is a notoriously awful board. So this definitely had to go because they didn't make very many PCI graphics cards. And the ones they do make are incredibly rare. And the only ones that are being made brand new now are uh, GT210s and they are grossly overpriced they're like forty dollars a card and they're only the 512 megabyte cards they're just absolutely abysmal so this motherboard had to go so i put uh this board in here um and it you know fit perfectly and most of the front io works uh as well too the front power light is a little wonky but the hard drive access light works really well and with this board in here i can now drop in uh, a normal um pcie graphics card um, being that GT630. So I will have a follow-up video on this once that graphics card comes, and I can uh, kind of show you what its gaming performance is on some older games, specifically about 2001 to 2010 is what this will be used for. Um, so yeah, it's just a very odd computer that I threw together with a bunch of other computer parts I had. On the back, I have a weird... IO shield configuration. This is actually the uh, mesh that came out of the inside of the Bostro computer um, that I have taped down. And then there's a hole down here because there used to be a modem card in there, which is no longer in there because it doesn't fit. Um, oh, and yeah, that Vostro was a small form factor um, build anyway. So this is a little bit of a budget board. It only supports up to four gigabytes of RAM and it's missing a couple features. But for what I'm using it for, it is a perfectly adequate board. But yeah, so once that GPU comes, I will hopefully make a follow-up video. And if you watched my previous GT1030 video, you noticed that I did have my camera pointed at the screen. Since that video has been aired, I have acquired a capture card. So hopefully, fingers crossed, I am able to do a little magic and have a live feed of this computer on your screen. So I think that'll do it for tonight's uh, relatively short, uh, fun little show and tell for you. Um, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.